Hi, welcome to another edition of anglos.co.il. Today we're going to be talking about finding a job in Israel. And with us in the studio is Richard Binstock from Recruit.il. Richard, welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here. Great. Thanks so much for coming and, and giving us your time today. Pleasure. Um, just to start off with, just we get to know you, maybe give us a little bit of a background about yourself and the job market, the recruiting industry here in Israel. Sure. So my background is I'm from London, if you can hear. Um, I moved here 11 years ago. And prior to that, my uh, work uh, experience was in recruitment, uh, working for a uh, large uh, American recruitment company uh, with, in their London office. So I did that for two years. Um, the specialization there was accounting and finance, and it was very good by the book recruitment um, and then I moved to Israel uh, 11 years ago and I did not go immediately into recruitment. Um, I was a, a worker, an employee working in the Israeli job scene um, which the popular um, area or easy area to start in back then was online media, traffic, uh, acquisition, people on online and clicking on banners and things like that. So uh, I started there and had a few jobs in that area of uh, online acquisition. And I noticed uh, during these few years that there wasn't uh, the recruitment and headhunting uh, industry in Israel was very different and smaller to elsewhere I had experience in, in uh, the UK, in America, Europe and so on, which is a, is a, a much more evolved uh, setup. And in, in Israel, I found it wasn't. Um, and I always had it in the back of my mind that there was an opportunity there to offer my uh, skill set and knowledge and um, and I did at one point I found myself between jobs and uh, realized that was that was my opportunity and the timing was there yeah. uh, and I kind of set up what is now our recruitment agency nice maybe just as an overview we're sitting here kind of hopefully heading towards the post corona Sure. Era, how do you currently see the, the Israeli job market, specific, more specifically for Anglos? You know, what, 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 are you, what is your feeling in the market? How are you seeing the current markets? We're sitting here in April 2021. Sure. Um, well, the good news, I think, is we're, we're on the upward curve now. Um, obviously, we've had a, a, a global situation um, for the last over a year now. Uh, it's, it kind of all kicked off in March 2020. Um, and that definitely affected all industries, but recruitment was heavily hit. Uh, the job market was heavily hit. And as a recruitment agency, we're a, a luxury service for uh, businesses. Right. You know, um, Some companies prefer to hire on their own. There's, a, there's, there's obviously a cost involved. And so we were the first to go, so to speak, uh, or to be put on the back burner uh, in terms of service. Um, so that happened. Everyone rode the storm in, in, all, in all industries, in, in, in all fields. Um, and now I'm, I'm happy that people have uh, adapted, um, companies have adapted, uh, hiring staff have uh, learned how to deal with it and um, we're, we're busy again. We've got a lot of uh, new job instruction and requirements and no. um, the, the market has recovered somewhat. Great. So, it's, so the market you're feeling is like on the uptick again in terms of the employment I, I opportunities. Do. Yes. Great. Let's take a step back. So thinking about finding a job in Israel, I'm sitting in London, South Africa, the US, and I'm thinking about coming to Israel, maybe making Aliyah. Would you, would you recommend 
somebody who's looking to make that step, would you recommend that people start looking for jobs before they come? Or would you recommend that they're here on the ground? How, how, would, how would you propose that somebody starts their job search? Do you start it before you come or when, once you arrive? So this is, this is a common question. We get this every other day um, or certainly regularly. And, and the, the answer is it is difficult to find and close a job remotely from abroad before you've moved here. Yeah. Various reasons. You rarely have an Israeli phone number. Uh, so people are having to do the video calls or WhatsApp calls. There's time difference. If you're in the US, you've got to what, expect to call at two in the morning and so on. Um, further to that, you're not in Israel, so you can't meet anyone, obviously. Yeah. Uh, you're not there to meet the, the team, see the offices. They can't read you like... Obviously, there's the, the video call is popular, but it's not the same as you and I now. Yeah. Um, obviously, so, so obviously, sort of, especially post Corona, that that first or second interaction would would be normally on maybe via a Zoom anyway. But ultimately, you're saying at some point there's going to be that that meeting that come into the office. Sure. At some level of that process. So companies aren't fully uh, on board with. Um, hiring people that aren't here. Right. Uh, legally as well, that you don't have your Teodat Zahir or citizenship yet. Yeah. You can't pay taxes yet. Yeah. You, can, you know, all of these things. Um, so the answer I give to people when I ask that is it's very hard, not impossible, yes. but very hard to find, interview and close a job before you have arrived. Got you. If the, the, the kind of gray, gray area there is if you have a ticket booked and confirmed, right. you can... Maybe kick off the kick job off. You yeah. can kick off, Got you can you. do your research. Yeah. You can say to an employee, you can send them your CV and if they contact you back and, and ask you, where, where are you? You know, you could be, we would be happy to speak to you, but where are you? Yeah. You can say, well, listen, right now, I am in London. However, I am coming in May, May 15th or, or, or whatever it is, especially if it's a shorter, digestible time frame. Yes. If it's six months away, and this is a common question we get, I'm making Aliyah with my family in September, uh, for argument's sake. I would love to find uh, and close and secure a job before I arrive. Can I do this? It's hard. Yes. You know, I don't want to sugarcoat it. It is not easy to do that. You can make inroads. You can make introductions. Uh, for us as an agency, we are unable to send the CV of someone yes. who is not both of, of a citizen and in the country at okay. the moment. So as an agency, we can't help that person. Yes. Can they use another channel and, and apply themselves directly? Theoretically, they can. Nothing stops them sending their CV to a job advert. Do they want to? Um, not necessarily, because right. then they kind of burn their name into a system. Right. That, that name and email goes in, logged into a company CRM as, you know, wasn't relevant. So right. six months later, hard to reapply the same right, way. and then it comes up their name or oh, it didn't work out back then. I can't remember why. And so you want to kind of take a leap of faith. I tell people, come, it is uh, definitely now uh, a decent job market. Yeah. We are happy to chat to people. I always tell people who are abroad at that moment who ask me that question, I'm happy to take a call with you and, yeah. and give you some ideas right. uh, and peace of mind. I can't send your CV to anyone, but you can definitely learn what are your options, what are your kind of salary levels. Do some research. Research. Okay. So, do the, so, so, more, yeah. so, so more you would, you would recommend somebody to kind of do some groundwork. Uh, make connections. Kind of make connections. Speak like to that. agencies like ourselves or, or friends who live in Israel. Right. So then you hit the ground, you start to have meetings Correct. with companies like yourself once you get here so that every, all those kinds of things are in place. Already. Yes, that, I definitely advise Got you. that. In terms of opportunities, would you say for, for an English speaker, 
are the opportunities still mostly kind of in that tech space um in 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 the, in the tech market working either within the tech industry as a programmer or something like that uh, and then obviously the market to do outside sales selling to english speakers are those still the the major job opportunities yes short answer is, is yes um and high tech it's a buzzword, uh, it, it, it is the umbrella term. A lot okay. of people don't know actually the definition of high tech. It is an umbrella term of everything that falls underneath it. So every industry has a, a tech. Yeah. You have fintech, right. biotech, medtech. Uh, all the techs within the space are under the umbrella of high tech. Gotcha. And also not to be confused is you can work in high tech, but not be a programmer. Right. Um, all the, as you said, all the sales guys, marketing, customer success manager, biz dev, often work for a high tech company. So they yeah. work in high tech, but they're not a coder. But they're looking for English speakers. Correct. So there are lots of, fortunately, there is a, a big demand right. over the last 10 years uh, that companies have realized they can get native English speakers, not just English speakers, French, Russian, yeah. Uh, uh, Asian languages right. we get asked for regularly. Have you, can you get me a Chinese customer success manager and so on? And we, <laughs> we try and find these people. Um, so people can have, feel comfortable in the knowledge that they can come here from most countries. Um, and there are requirements. Uh, you know, Wix.com operate in 30 languages. Yes. Uh, the, the product that people know is operational and functional in all those languages so half their entire company is customer support in those languages right. hundreds of people in tel aviv of all nationalities that's just you know an example okay so so, so what you're saying is essentially even though you're coming from another country to to a country where people speak literally a different language yeah there are advantages to coming here with native english definitely and uh you know, I, I, my wife is really, and I joke with her that I feel more confident about finding a job for an international right. than, than an Israeli like her. I mean, that relates to the space I'm in yes. and our agency gotcha. focuses on the internationals. Yeah. But within high tech, uh, you know, I often joke that the Israelis are the, are the coders and they build something and then they need the international community to sell it and market it abroad right. because that profile does it better than they do you yeah. know they're going to make spelling mistakes in their emails right. and if you're trying to sell a, pr a product for a hundred thousand dollars in that moment and you make a spelling mistake most ceos don't want that they want it fluid high register communication and that's where and, we and I, come in. And I would guess there's some benefit, just as an aside, to, you know, you're dealing with somebody in the States. It's, it's, it's nice, you know, to, to pick up, you know, the nuances and the, the nuances. language. nuances. To, to have a local who, who understands Very the nuances so. and, the, and the, the lingo, so to speak. And make references about the Super Bowl. Exactly. Or Mega Mark or, or whatever is the topic of that moment. Right. Have that friendly interaction, which is, as any person who's in sales or dealing with customers will tell you, is is very important to for that connection got you so so now i've come i've i'm now looking for jobs let's let's talk a little bit about the um, putting together a cv do is it is it important that my cv is in english and hebrew is it okay that it's only in english um what would so you recommend the the answer is it just simply depends on the, the job you're applying for if you are and I, we just mentioned it uh, before, if you are going into um, an English speaking or international related role, yes. uh, then English. All the companies welcome and rec want and communicate internally in English, okay. most anyway, um, especially high tech companies that deal with abroad, all their internal company emails are in English. Right. Um, so it's, uh, unusual for that to be a problem yeah. if you are a developer programmer and so on um, then Hebrews is fine 
Okay. Uh, and we, we get a lot of people with both. Um, I would say if you ha your CV is in English, don't stress now yes. about putting it in Hebrew. Gotcha. Find out if you need to do that later, okay. but you don't need to kind of spend money or, or time on doing that now uh, if, if you haven't done that. Gotcha. And, and that CV, is, is there a, would you say there's a preferred format of putting that CV together just you know, very broadly, or does it really follow the norms of most other countries in terms of you know, just a very basic format in terms of your personal information, your, experience, your work experience, your, 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 your study um, qualifications? The, no, the, the, there is an Israeli format. Okay. Um, and, and I always refer to it as, as a, a microcosm of Israeli culture. Okay. Uh, and it's, it's less is more. Um, so short CVs. Okay. One are, page? Uh, so it, <laughs> if you're young or, or have only a few years experience, one page. Yeah. Condense it into one page. Don't need every volunteering you did at university or every kind of donation program you did, you, you just don't, they're not interested in that. Gotcha. Um, so one page, if, um, you know, you do have 10, 15 years plus, and it's difficult to do that, then you can go over. You don't have to force everything into a size eight font and, and squash it all in. Yes. Um, but a page and a half, gotcha. maximum, maximum two pages. Right. Um, but definitely no more than two. So the answer is from one page to two pages uh, and that's it. Um, but there are other things to, to factor in. And I said less is more. And just to follow up on that point, you know, in Israel, as you all appreciate, and you kind of go into a nice restaurant, but the front door and it is nothing to write home about. There's no lights or anything yeah. or flashing and that, you know, that's one of Israel's charms. Yeah. Um, once you get the service, it's nice, but get, <laughs> the, that journey to get there is, is not always pretty. Right. And, and I always kind of uh, muse that, that a CV and the job market does follow suit a little bit okay. there. So it doesn't need to be all pretty and stuff. They want tuchless. They want um the just the the, the just relevant the information information relevant. and and just to caveat that things like months from 10 years ago um putting your university degree down so nine june 1997 to april 2000 no Something just like put that. when you finish 2000 yeah okay. 2002 BA degree in whatever. Got you. And you don't need all the months and, and January and all the months are long words. Right. And it, suddenly if you add 20, 10, 15 mentions of months, it, 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 it it's, uh, uses up Got you. word space. <laughs> okay, great. So, okay, so I've prepared my CV. What are, what, what are some resources that I can use now to go and find a job? So obviously there's companies like yourself, that will assist me. There's, sure. there's LinkedIn, uh, Glassdoor, you know, Facebook, you know, different resources. Are there other resources? Are there better resources or other resources? Definitely. Um, so as you say, yeah, uh, an agency is part of a job search. Yeah. You know, I tell people that contact us and, and then a month later say, well, you didn't get me anything. And I say, well, you know, we're, we're looking for you, we're trying, but we're part of your job search. Right. Any effective, comprehensive job search is multi-channeled. And all the things you said are relevant. And I'm, you know, I don't want to uh, big up co my competition too much, but <laughs> there are various Facebook groups that uh, we try and keep track or, or monitor them because yeah. we advertise sometimes right. or or look at who else is hiring. So we we monitor. Facebook is very big okay. here. There's lots of uh, Facebook groups with twenty thousand members plus. Right. Uh, Nefesh Benefesh being a well known one. They have the Nefesh Benefesh group okay. and website and core Facebook group, and then they have Nefesh Benefesh jobs. Yes. They, they were right 
to know that they had very high visitation for just the jobs. Yeah. So they realized, well, why don't we separate our information into, into having a dedicated job, job a page, Facebook yeah. group. Plus, they have staff okay. uh, who do what I do. Um, and, you know, and they're funded uh, by donations externally. So they are able to employ staff to, to help you in your job search. So that's one example. The Mizrad Klita, Ministry of Absorption, also uh, similar to Nefesh, they have paid staff to okay. help you. Both of these. So they will, there was actually one of my questions that the, 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 the Ministry of uh, Alien Absorption, yeah, they will assist you. They do. Okay, They're yes. not great at communicating it. And a lot of their information, weirdly, isn't in all the languages. Yeah. But um, they do offer CV writing okay. for free. Okay. Career counseling. Uh, all free right. um, retraining they don't want loads of people coming here and just being on state benefits right. so they offer um, cooking if you you know if you were into being a chef or working in a restaurant yeah. uh, yoga instructors they have yoga courses okay. for free to become a yoga teacher just things like this and and them and them you would communicate with they would that would be you know when we are when you arrive in any yeah community, when you arrive in Alia, there's like a contact person in your city pamphlets and you yeah. kind of have to work out who to contact in your city they they don't necessarily reach out to you and you get a phone call go hi this right. is avi from the Mizrad Klita. anything i can help you with please let me know in fact i'll like you know so you got to do a bit of ground you do have that to proactive yeah, you have proactive. to be pro you have to be proactive gotcha. you get some you know documentation and pamphlets when you arrive and you have to find your person and your point of contact to speak to and then there's some brilliant uh, non-profits like Keep Olim. Okay. Um, again, uh, you know, not a competitor of what I do. Actually, the, the, the founder's a really nice guy. Um, and they have uh, a, a great resource also uh, offering all these kind of services I just mentioned, like yes. CV writing. Gotcha. And it was set up by an American Ole, and he saw... Uh, an insufficient uh, assistance despite yeah. all these other resources there's still a, a, a dearth or a, 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 a gap yeah. of demand versus uh, supply of services gotcha. so there are other resources definitely that um, but basically someone... you've got to you know be as proactive as possible don't just drop your your CV with a recruitment agency yeah or... You know, you, you got to you got to keep you know keep looking. Use as many multi channel as is possible. is the the way I'd sum it up. Uh, uh, do a bit of everything. There's uh, um, uh, with a small payment services like Gavahim. I don't know if you've heard of them. Yeah. Who offer classroom training? Okay. On uh, the Israeli job market, um, CV writing. Uh, interview technique. Okay. They bring speakers. I've, I've spoken there uh, okay. in, in, it's like a classroom format yeah. uh, for a month or two and you do a course and um, you pay a small fee and, and you get exposure to the Israeli job market. And then at the end, they try to match you as well. And yeah. they offer recruitment services as part of their program. Got you. So that's another example. Super. So, Another thing that, that, that often comes up that I see questions getting asked on, on, on these kind of forums and things like that um, is location. So a lot of people will say, where's the be if I don't have a job, where's the best kind of place to situate myself? Like oftentimes, you know, people have, issue, you know, there, there are certain communities they want to go into sure. or if they have family. Those are kind of other circumstances that you have to take into account. But generally, if you're coming here as a family, uh, and somebody, somebody, people always ask, where do I want to locate myself? So as you said, if, if you're completely neutral of other factors, uh, and if you put family or connections aside, uh, religious level aside, everything, try to shelve that, and you've got a completely blank slate, yes. then the things to bear in mind are, obviously, Tel Aviv and the center are popular uh, areas for employment 
There, there, there's no denying that. Uh, however, there is a lot of action elsewhere. Okay. Um, the government at, um, is very much in um, a direction now of encouraging diversification of the economy into other places. So getting people a, to move out of the same Correct. They don't want concern. everyone in, it's like everyone in Manhattan, everyone wants to go to LA, everyone wants to be in central London and then the, the prices of accommodation are crazy. Yeah. And no one can afford to be there. Young people can't afford to be there. So some people suffer. So uh, most countries and certainly in Israel, there is a, uh, an intention, an effort yeah. to improve opportunities elsewhere and, and the current uh, program here is is in the north. They're trying yeah. to move things in the north. There's a, a great um, high tech s- s- uh, development in in Beersheba in the south, right. part of the university there. They they have a lot of young talent. Yeah. So they're like, well, there's young people living there, graduating there. Why do they have to then leave and find a job elsewhere with right. their skills? So. You don't have to be in, in Tel Aviv or Jerusalem, you know? Right. Um, so again, if you've got a clean slate, then you should research a little bit more about more affordable areas where investment is happening, yes. which, you know, is, is, is a small, we're in a small country, so it can, it can be lots of different places. Got you. So something else that I see often comes up is there's, there's a lot of chatter and talk about, um, about your age when you come. There's, there's, there's talk about, you know, that it's a lot harder to, to, to find a, a first job in Israel over the age of 50, for example. Um, do you find, are, are, do you find in, in your kind of sphere that, that age is relative to, to somebody's job seeking success? Sadly, yes. Okay. It is the short answer. Um, and it is, you know, it can be a whole conversation for another time. It is a challenge, it is a problem. I, I'm sure it's a problem globally. Um, ageism exists, right. um, no doubt about it. Uh, I'd like to think a lot of companies I speak to do want diversification. These days, um, people want to balance it up with as many women uh, coders and, and things that are not necessarily associated with certain profiles. Right. Uh, uh, there is an intention for balance of, of diversification, but age is a factor. Um, especially if you're going for jobs where aren't other you know younger junior people are also applying yes and they're cheaper sort of more entry level correct you know, the, the term young and hungry right. this is something we we get a lot and and it, i know what they want and i know what they mean and i we give everyone a chance we speak to every candidate we right. send every candidate okay we are we let that decision we're the middleman yeah. So we let that decision, you know, our hands, we, we are, are clean of any uh, decision right. by a company. So you wouldn't hold that. somebody Absolutely back. Absolutely not. Would, quite the opposite. We, we get to find out right. the opinion of a company by trying to send different profiles. Gotcha. Um, but unfortunately, there, you know, it's no coincidence that a lot of knockbacks do come from some, and they, they use the term overqualified. Okay, yeah. Uh, or not the right fit, not the right team fit. If you've got a, fight, a team of sales guys who are all 28, yeah. and you send the 50 year old, he might be a nice guy, he might be able to do the job fine. Right. You know, the fit you, know you and me are not a pro- <laughs> would probably get knocked back. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the team fit, right. overqualified, will be seeking another job in a year. These kind of uh, common terms come. Okay. Uh, and, you know, what, what, what you can't change someone's opinion. It's, it's hard. Yeah. We, we do our best. We represent everyone um, and try, as I said, to, to test everyone. Um, but it is a challenge. How do you deal with that? You know, if, if that's your next question, uh, it's, it's not easy, right. but you just got to, there are companies that are flexible, right? You know, there's thousands of companies here and 
some are uh, more have the hiring managers are of that demographic yeah. and therefore are more sympathetic Got you. to the to other people who they or, don't or you may bring a certain skill to the table you or, once you, you get in the door bring that, a lot that, of value that, you, uh, that, you, that, that maybe they like and so th there are opportunities. very very much so you, you obviously more experienced people offer a lot of different value and bring a lot to the table super do do you find can, tell us maybe from your experience are there sort of common mistakes common misconceptions that anglos have when in, in terms of looking for a job here things that you've picked up over time yeah um i i i would say yes um n not deploying your personal network enough i think is a common one because there's a certain not, I don't think embarrassment is the right word, a reluctance. People come here and most people want their peers and friends to feel like they're, they're in a good space and doing yeah. well. And uh, there's a, um, a certain reluctance to ask like a for certain, help. a certain pride almost because yeah, you're, you know, something you like that. I've made Alio and now I'm battling yeah. to find a job. Like, don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Don't be afraid. And, and there's specific reasons for that. Um, uh, aside from the, obviously it's helpful and, and your own network, however big or small it is, uh, are living here. They get a fee for bringing yeah. someone in. The refer a friend yeah. is my, biggest co competition within companies people actually yeah, get paid the, to, to, to if, if you end up correct. employing somebody rather than a company pay someone like me right they would far far rather pay a smaller fee one it's a smaller fee yes. and two they're rewarding their own staff Got you. um so they pay a fee to their own staff for bringing in uh someone and obviously the company likes that, it's, it's cheaper, um, and that person is effectively already screened and vetoed and vouched for right. by one of their own. Got you. That's actually, that's actually a good point that you raised, because something that, in, in, in my time here and talking to, to people in the job, job search market, is it always seems a lot easier to find a job when it comes through a referral. So what I yeah. mean by that, if I go onto LinkedIn and I put my CV and it comes through as another CV, whereas if Richard walks into HR office and he says, listen, I've got a friend who's got certain skills, um, referrals always seem to be a lot, get you a lot further here in, in terms of- in 100%, terms of what I've and, and you're absolutely right what you just said. You, you touched on the main point. If you apply on a job advert like LinkedIn, you're one of 100, sometimes 200, people yeah and some one or two hr people how much attention right. are they going to give you uh on your cv either zero yeah do you know the average time uh a person looks at a resume for i don't but you're going to tell me it's around 12 seconds right 12 seconds uh is apparently the average time your resume gets looked at right um but if someone comes into your office uh, and says, listen, my friend wants to apply to this job. I'm vouching for him or her. Yeah. Y you're going to get more than the 12 seconds and you're definitely going to get more than the zero seconds yeah. that a lot of people your get. Your name's going to come up, somebody, you're going to bring it to somebody's attention. Yeah, okay, referral, you're already you know? vouched for. So, yeah. you know, already this person, the, the, the hiring manager knows some basic things are, are, are met. Yeah. The person's in Israel, coming to Israel, the person is uh speaks the correct language there's already some things that are not filtered in job adverts you get on a job advert, you get people applying from all over the world right. who want to move to israel yeah. from you know less developed countries who are, are trying to apply. we put a job advert out and we get cvs from all over we okay. get whatsapp messages from these foreign phone numbers right. going hey uh can you get me a job in israel uh, from and we're like, well, not, not really, <laughs> no. Gotcha. So, so a lot of the headache, that yeah. initial headache and, and, and initial vetting is already taken out of the equation. And that is, is, is big. So, so in other words, as you, as you alluded to in the beginning, go out, 
Go meet people. You and know, friends of friends. Make friends. Yeah. Go to go to parties. If if you go to shul, make yeah. friends, connect with people, and and let people know that you're looking for a job. Don't be afraid to let people know you're looking for a job. Yeah. Would be the 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 the, the summary of, a great of this of, pe- of that of that point. Yeah, uh, yeah. definitely. Um, in terms of so so now I've I've got my foot in the door. Uh, Somebody's noticed my CV. You, you've got me an opportunity. Are there important things that, that you feel are unique to this market in terms of the interview process? Um, obviously, a lot of it's, uh, you know, maybe that, you know, for example, the, the first, like we were talking before, that, that first interview may be on Zoom. Are there certain things that I should remember or mistakes that people are making in that interview process? When I go to the interview, should I wear a jacket and tie? Israel's a lot more relaxed. Are, are there certain things to remember in that interview process? Okay, so first off, no need for a tie. <laughs> um, I've never, I've barely in 11 years seen anyone wear a tie. Um, only when uh, Prince William actually came to Israel yeah. and uh, I saw on the news, they took him to the beach of Tel Aviv right. and all these add-on guys, all the entourage, these poor guys were all in suits and ties. <laughs> in July on the beach in Tel Aviv and all I could think of was god you had to go out and buy a tie for this one day <laughs> um, but no uh, you don't need uh, like we are now shirts no ties no jackets is absolutely fine okay um, learn and this comes back to the CV part put in put in the relevant buzzwords yes B to B, B to C. These are the um, uh, EMEA, US market uh, numbers. They like numbers. If you're in applying for a uh, a customer speaking or facing job, um, what were you responsible for? What and if you weren't really, what were you exposed to? Yeah. If you were just customer service and you didn't really sell anything, but you were speaking to customers who were paying X, Y, and Z, then find a way to deal with that you know customer support for high net worth customers who were spending 50 grand a month or or, or whatever find a way to reflect uh you know you're not lying but but find a way to be creative yeah um and and put in those buzzwords you know if you're if you've never if you're applying for a cyber security job um, and you've never done cybersecurity, put in things like, have, were you ever involved in uh, IT security or, or logins or passwords or, or, or anything that can right. relate to that? Gotcha. So that's a common mistake, okay. just to you know, answer what you were saying about mistakes. It can start the CV stage, yes. and we didn't cover that earlier, but um, make your CV relevant. Okay. And, and take out the irrelevance. If you, if you were a waiter 20 years ago, it, you don't need that. And, you know, we said that before. Keep it relevant and tachlas. Yes. Uh, you worked at your front desk at a, a health club in, in, you know, your hometown. It's, it's not relevant anymore. Yeah. Um, and once we're past that stage, things to note, look up. And it, it happens. It doesn't happen. It happened. It, it fails to happen too often. Look up the guy you're meeting. Yeah. If you can see he, you've got something in common with him or, or he is from Joburg or work, did a, a degree, a master's 10 years ago in New yeah. York. Find something that you find, can relate you know, to. Him, make yeah. a connection. Yeah. Make a connection. Where did, where, who is he? Where did, or she, where did they work beforehand? Yeah. So on. So, um, do, do, do your due diligence. Do some homework, do some homework about the company, sense. I would imagine. Yeah, but not just their website. Yeah. Look them up on Crunchbase. Uh, look them up, uh, which is a common um, directory. Tells you about funding. Do they okay. have funding? Yeah. You know, are they, have they had $40 million in funding? Are they, are they in the news? Look them up on the tech magazines. Yeah. No camels, techcrunch.com. Various sources yeah. to research a company beyond just their website. Right. People think, oh, oh, yeah, I'll read them up. I'll read their website. I'll be fine. Yeah. What, what else is there? Right. Were they in the news? Were they on Globes? Yeah. Um, did they lay people off because of Corona? 
glass door. What are other staff saying? Glass door is quite a popular um, portal now for yes. what staff say about, about a company. Your own company. Correct. Yeah. Is there high turnover? You know, maybe you could say, listen, I, I hope you don't mind. I, I saw that there's been a bit of changes recently. Yes. Is there a reason for that? Was it Corona related? You know, so it sounds like a, a common sense research the company, but, but break that down, gotcha. you know, do, do more than the minimum. To, to, how, how many interviews generally would one go through in, in the tech space to, to, to finally get that job? What, 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 how long and, and how many interviews is, does that process generally take? It, it, it's a bit of a how long is a piece of string. Um, we've had people offered on the spot. Okay. Once upon a time, I got uh, offered on the same day. They, they moved me from first interview uh, as not, not to say I, I, I got the job in one interview, that's not true. Um, they asked me to wait where, because they wanted to check if everyone's available. Yes. Uh, and this was before the days of everyone working from home or, or a lot of people not right. available. Um, but they say, listen, you know, well done. Just wait here a second. Let me see if Shimreet's available. And then in my case, that each person was available. Um, and I met three people and it turned out to be a one day marathon. Yes. Um, so it can happen quickly is my point, or it can be a long, yeah. painful, drawn out thing. Right. Big companies, um, Amazon, for example, they do low, they do uh, self-assessments. They do uh, meet other staff, not senior, like just other uh, yeah. equals to get their opinion. And it's, a, I think, like a two month process because they are obviously a very sought after yeah well-known name and a, 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 an opportunity most people wouldn't turn down and they treat it like getting into like harvard <laughs> um so that's a, a long drawn out so it, it's very hard to say exactly but it would kind just of, been on the company it does in the general I in general I, I i'd like to say around three weeks from if a company is genuinely actively hiring yeah uh, and you have applied, you know, it's, it's a stage a week over three weeks. Gotcha. And this whole process would be, you know, for the English speaker, this whole process would be in English and they would conduct the interviews comfortably. A hundred percent in English. In English and it's all. In yeah. English. If you, if you don't speak Hebrew, no one's going to put someone in front of you who doesn't speak any English right. or your language and see how you get so on. So you don't have to worry that you're, you're, you know, you're going to be at some point down the interview process, you're going to be confronted by somebody at a higher level who's not necessarily an English speaker. No, or, but uh, 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 a, a quick kind of caveat to that is a friend of mine uh, just got a job at TikTok. Okay. TikTok are well known. Right. And they, not many people know, they have a small office here in, in Tel Aviv. And... Uh, they're owned by a Chinese company. Okay. They, yeah. are a, they are right. a big Chinese company. And during his process, he had a Zoom interview with a Chinese HR woman. And he claims she barely <laughs> spoke a word of English. And he didn't ever see him And he thought he, he fluffed it. He yeah. thought, uh, you know, I, I've choked this, you know. Yeah. And the reality is he actually did get through. Okay. And she obviously just wanted to make sure he was presentable and communicated yeah. well and, and stuff but her english he claims was n very little <laughs> next to zero and he got the job and he works there now and he's happy but um i only just you asked me that made me think of that but the answer is that's an anomaly yeah. uh it's 99 percent you're going to gotcha. be comfortable interviewing in english the other the other point that comes up often from what i've heard is is this whole thing about they, they always ask you either to rule out people or to get a sense of sort of where you're at in terms of salary expectations it's a famous question what are your salary expectations yeah um i've heard it's always better to give yourself a ballpark you not not you know what would you recommend if so, somebody asked me for example about my salary expectations yeah um that's obviously a common question it's a bit of a minefield and we get asked that a lot so my answer is one of the advantages of having an agency yes. like us uh, involved is you get the behind the scenes information. Right. So we know their budget. We know their range. Is it, if it's 15 to 18,000 shekels a month, and obviously worth mentioning if, if, the, if someone's watching who um, is not familiar with how it works in Israel, it's a monthly salary. Um, 
we know that and we kind of if someone's progressing in a process yes we advise them how to answer that question gotcha. based on, your on that budget correct yeah. so that's definitely an advantage when people say well why would i use an agency yes. and not just do it myself the behind the scenes information yeah. is, is is really helpful like almost critical right uh, if you don't have that and you're doing it on your own i find just try to be honest try to research as best you can what you think it's paying like the market related correct the market position. rate there are ways to find out right. and and keep it sensible uh, another way is if you are in israel now right. and you have or had a job previously use that right. i was on 12000 shekels a month in my last job or, or i am on 12000 12000 shekels and therefore right and therefore i'm interviewing for jobs paying 15 right so bump it up 20%, yep. whatever it is, um, and use, I always say fact is far more important than opinion in anything. Yeah. You know, if you're having a debate of politics with someone, you know, fact, not I think, I think so-and-so should do that. You know, it fact, it, and, and in, in this conversation, in this situation, I am on, or I was on, Yeah. No one cares what, no, if you go, I want, yes. I want 15,000 shekels a month. Well, I don't care what you want. Right. Like, I, 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 I care what's right yes. and, and what suits. So use, use fact or phrase it factually. Yes. I am, I'm interviewing for, yes. you know, that's the, the, the easiest way. I'm interviewing for jobs paying 15 to 16,000 shekels a month. And therefore, whether the person thinks you're worth it or not, you've told them that you're actually in other conversations for that money right. and they can take it or leave it kind right. of thing. Um, so research, use, use kind of solid statements like that. Don't just pull numbers out the air yeah. and, and, and don't say I, I want. And if possible, have, a, have behind the scenes help or agency help advising you of the budget. And therefore, we let people stay in the budget, obviously. Right. Richard, maybe just to close off, is there something that we haven't touched on, some useful tips or information that you would you know, put out there that would be helpful for, for a job seeker in Israel? Yeah, I, I, one thing we didn't cover yet, um, on your CV, a common mistake, um, I, I just see it, I would say, every day. Um, and this can be a, a senior CEO who was earning $200,000 a year, right. will still make this mistake on yeah. his, his or her CV, um, is if you've had more than one job at the same company. Okay. Right? So you've got, you've got your CV here, and you put HSBC manager of uh, international wealth management, Right. And then you got promoted. You yeah. got another job at HSBC. Okay. And what everyone does, or 90% of people do, they'll put HSBC again. Okay. 20 to tw 20, uh, 2000 to 2002, and then another job. Okay. And then if they got, had another job, next job, HSBC, 2002 to 2005. So they'd have a whole list of the same Correct. Company. And at a quick glance... Bearing in mind, not everyone's reading. I mentioned before, people will have a very few seconds on your CV. Seconds. Right? A quick glance, it looks like not, people might not read the company name each time. Yes. So it looks like you've moved around. Right, and they don't want somebody who jumps Cor around. Correct. No, not, so you, it, you actually turn something really advantageous into a problem. So how do you show somebody then, Easily. Uh, look, I, I progressed. HSBC. I, I was so good, I progressed through this yeah. company. Name the company once. Yeah. HSBC, 2000, in that example, 2000 to 2010, as one mention of the company name only. Okay. And then the job Position. titles and the dates underneath, maybe in a, uh, a different, f uh, the, the, the company names in bold. Indented or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and then suddenly it's, oh wow, you got promoted right. two or three times. You were at the same company for 10 years or whatever it is, gotcha. is an, a really good thing. Yeah. And you're at risk of not only denying that, yeah. but actually hindering yourself. Right. And I see that 
really regularly and we you know we change it for them and yeah. and, and another side note of, of having help in an agency is we will spot those mistakes yes. for you and and do that so that's definitely uh, a common thing and on that note on the note of cvs it's very common for people to just put a company name and, and leave it at that and not write the company description so what does the company what does do? it do just yeah. one short line so maybe somebody's never heard of the company you've got them. they've never heard of half of the companies right. not everyone's worked at fortune 500 companies from the age of 22 right. onwards right so it, most people have worked at a company that someone else hasn't heard of gotcha fact yeah so a, a short line in italics underneath the company name that's how we do it of what the company does okay. b2b SaaS company in the field of e-commerce technology gotcha and then again you're catching a possibility that oh the, the company you're applying for is in the e-commerce technology Relevant. and they might that might not have come through properly gotcha richard thanks so much for your time we really Very appreciate welcome. the information hopefully help somebody find a job here Pleasure. In yeah thank you so much very welcome cheers